let's look at some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. Now, there is a long list of known benefits, um, and there may be many more out there. Research is still ongoing, but, uh, but for weight loss, uh, it can be very beneficial. Uh, for weight maintenance, uh, I think uh, very, very beneficial because remember, weight loss is um, very, for many people, fairly easy to do, especially when you're in a program. But it's the weight maintenance piece that can be very difficult. I think weight maintenance is harder than weight loss. So I think it's important to, tr to find as many tools as, as possible to help in that weight maintenance phase. And we know intermittent fasting is one of those tools that can be very beneficial. Um, it also helps to increase our muscle mass, uh, decrease fat mass, uh, which I think is very important when we lose weight, uh, improve something called insulin resistance. We had discussed this uh, at our last um, talk when we talked about sugars, um, improves diabetes by improving our blood sugars, uh, increased energy levels. We know it helps to lower our bad cholesterol. Um, and then as far as, you know, whether it maybe extends lifespan, possible prevention of certain cancers, even prevention of Alzheimer's disease, uh, there's still a lot of studies pending, but people are looking at some of these things very closely. And I think we'll find uh, some more information coming out on those things in the near future. So, you know, the beauty of intermittent fasting is the flexibility that it offers. You can pick the timings that work for you. Uh, you can choose how often you want to do it. You could do it once a week. You can do it a couple of times a week uh, or more frequently. You know, everybody differs on how they respond to it. Some people respond nicely doing it once a week. Some may need to do it a little bit more often, okay? Um, and it often works better when you pick a day when you are more distracted or busy so your mind is not as focused so much on food. And remember this when you're fasting, you are going to feel hungry, okay? Especially in the beginning. Uh, but recognize that hunger will come in waves. And those waves typically last a few minutes, okay? So if you can ride that wave out, it, you know, you feel much better afterward. And over time, as you get used to fasting, you should have less and less of these um, hunger waves. So how does um, intermittent fasting work? You know, what is it? We know, like I said, science shows that, uh, uh, that uh, it is very effective, but what's going on internally that makes it work? So the answer is basically summed up in one word, and that's insulin. And again, we talked about insulin uh, when we talked about sugars, but you will hear me refer to insulin in many of our lectures, okay? Um, this insulin is basically a hormone that's made by our pancreas in response to eating carbohydrates and even to some extent um, um, proteins and uh, fats. So basically every time we eat, some amount of insulin is released into our bloodstream. So, you know, I'm sorry if this is a little blurry, but this is carbohydrates. So when we eat carbs, we get the most insulin release by our pancreas. When we eat proteins, we get a little bit, not as much as with carbs. And we eat fats, we get even less. But every time we eat something, insulin is released into our bloodstream by the pancreas. So as we see in this slide, every time we eat, insulin spikes. So as we eat throughout the day, we get spikes of insulin. If we eat six times a day, we get six spikes of insulin. So here we go, you know, we eat breakfast, we get a spike of insulin here. A morning snack, we'll get a spike of insulin. Lunch, we get another spike. Afternoon snack, another spike. Dinner, another spike. And then um, evening snack often, another spike. So we have, you know, basically throughout the day, constant release um, of uh, insulin. And as we discussed again in the last lecture, that constant bombardment of insulin leads to what we call insulin resistance where insulin just does not work as effectively. And when that happens, we get all this buildup of insulin as well as glucose in our bloodstream, which is what eventually leads to fat storage and weight gain and diabetes, okay? So when we are doing a 16-8 uh, intermittent fast, what's happening to insulin, okay? Remember, this is when you fast for 16 hours, and you eat two regular meals in an eight hour time frame. So basically now, rather than getting those six to seven spikes, you're now getting 
two spikes of um, insulin in a 24 hour period, okay? So again, compare that to the previous slide when we have this many different uh, spikes, all right? So here you have two spikes of insulin in that 24 hour period. Uh, do, you go, do you remember back in the 80s and 90s when we were told to eat six small meals a day? Uh, and we realize now looking back that that probably was not the greatest advice. Uh, the six insulin spikes people got uh, per day is uh, probably one of the things that has contributed to uh, weight gain over the years. So here is what happens to insulin when you do a uh, 20 hour fast, all right? The 24 intermittent fast. You're fasting for 20 hours when there is no insulin release whatsoever, all right? And then in that four hour uh, time frame, if you eat one meal or if you eat two small meals, you're gonna get one or two spikes of insulin, all right? Again, compare that to the six or seven that many people get normally. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about intermittent fasting, uh, here are a few uh, resources. Um, Obesity Code, I think that is a must read, even if uh, you're not interested in fasting. Uh, it is a big eye opener. It is written uh, by a physician who, um, who is an expert uh, with weight management. Uh, he's a nephrologist, uh, um, he initially started off that way, uh, but he's regarded as a king of intermittent fasting. And um, if you are truly interested in doing it, he has uh, another book called A Complete Guide to Fasting, uh, which kind of helps you step by step in how to go about doing it. Uh, diet Doctor is a uh, website that's more geared towards a keto diet, but it does have some good information on uh, intermittent fasting. And let's say there is a free app that you can download on your phone called Zero. Uh, it is a free app, um, but what I like is if you are doing fasting, it helps you keep track of the hours. It, you know, it's, it's like an alarm clock. It will tell you when your fasting period is over. Um, it keeps track day to day, week to week, how many hours, how many days of the week, how many days of the month that you fasted. So I think it's a really good uh, motivator as well.